So let me present you my six months progress report. My name is Bodi Jarvankos, and the title of my PhD thesis is Accuracy of Digital Technologies in Implant Prostodontics from Impression Taking to Cast Fabrication. Uh, I'm a second year uh, resident at the Department of Prostodontics. My supervisor, supervisor is Barbara Kishpei, and my scientific methodology supervisor is Katta Kelaman, and the group of statisticians helping me is Reka Tut, Tomás Koy, and Gergely Aguc. My vision is a modern, simple, accurate, and patient-friendly workflow in implant prostodontics, and, and my mission is to investigate the accuracy of novel technologies in implant prostodontics. Currently, I have two projects running. Um, uh, the first one is comparing the accuracy of additive and conventional implant cast fabrication, and the second one is comparing the accuracy of conventional and different digital implant impression technologies. Uh, to investigate these topics, I designed two systematic reviews and meta-analyses. Uh, my first project is comparing the accuracy of additive versus conventional cast fabrication in implant prosthodontics, a systematic review and meta-analyses. Um, uh, when fabricating an implant prosthesis, one of the most important things is that the uh, implant analogs in the cast should be in the exact same position as the implants are in the jaws. To achieve this, dentists most often use the uh, conventional method, which means taking an open tray impression and pouring it with gypsum to obtain the final cast. Um, this is a well proven method, it's considered to be the gold standard, but it has its limitations. It's time consuming, labor intensive, and there are many possibilities of error, and since it's done by hand, the quality is not constant. Uh, additive manufacturing offers a solution to these problems. It's much more time and cost effective, it can be partially or fully automated, and it produces a constant standard quality. So my aim is to investigate the accuracy of additive cast fabrication technologies compared to the conventional method. To uh, answer my clinical question, I decided to use the PICO framework, where my population is patients and typodonts with implants. Uh, intervention is additive cast fabrication, the comparator group is conventional gypsum cast fabrication, and the outcomes are 3D and linear deviations of the implant analogs measured in micrometers. My hypothesis is that additive cast fabrication is at least as accurate as the conventional method regarding implant prosthodontics. Uh, I conducted my systematic search on the 16th of November and I had a, a complete 3,568 hits. Throughout the duplicate removal, uh, title abstract and full text selection, I finally got nine eligible full texts. Uh, on my first, uh, first plot, you can see the difference, the mean difference of uh, root mean square deviations in the intervention and in the control group. Root mean square is an often used formula uh, to measure overall deviations. Um, and in this case, we used means and standard deviations measured in micrometers. Uh, the threshold for clinically acceptable accuracy is 120 micrometers. Uh, as you can see, all the uh, data are within the clinically acceptable threshold. The heterogeneity is quite high. There are uh, data on both sides of the plot, uh, which might be explained by the different uh, kinds of the different uh, methods in additive uh, cast fabrication and the different technologies used in the articles. Uh, we decided to put them together despite these big differences because First of all, um, they are all uh, accepted and used technologies in dental manufacturing and also there wasn't uh, sufficient data for subgroup analysis. Uh, we, we didn't find uh, any clinically relevant nor mathematically significant differences or correlations between the accuracy of the two groups. In these uh, two first plots, you can see the vertical displacement of the analogs in the first uh, plot in the control group and in the second one in the intervention group. Uh, yet again, the uh, clinically acceptable threshold is 120 micrometers, and all the data are means and standard deviations. Uh, in this case, we had a few outliers, but ex uh, except those, um, e even including those, uh, all the outcomes are within the clinically acceptable range, and there was no clinically uh, relevant nor statistically significant difference uh, in this case as well. And finally, the horizontal displacement of the implant analogs in the control and in the intervention groups. Yet again, we used um, um, means and standard deviations, uh, and uh, they are all measured in micrometers, and the clinically acceptable threshold is the same 120 micrometers. In this case, there was one um, uh, outlier in the last um, 
uh, outcome, which was outside of the clinically acceptable threshold. Otherwise, they were all uh, inside the 120 micrometers. So in this case, either uh, in this case uh, again, no uh, clinically relevant or mathematically significant difference regarding the accuracy of the two technologies. Uh, some strength of my um, study is that it's, it's based on a novel problem statement. Uh, it follows a strict reporting system and methodology. And um, all the previous um, studies in this topic were only systematic reviews. So it was a nice upgrade to include a statistical analysis. Of course, there are limitations as well, such as the low number of data, uh, inconsistent methodology in the included articles, and some of these articles uh, do not report in a very transparent way. All in all, my conclusion is there is no clinically relevant nor mathematically significant difference between the accuracy of the two methods. Uh, in practice, this means that additive technology is not less accurate and not less reliable than the conventional method, and clinicians can decide on the use of it based on the preferences and the needs. We would be more than happy if this motivated researchers to report in a more coherent and consistent way and to shift the focus of the research from the in vitro to the in vivo. Um, this is the state of, of my first project. My next step is um, the grade and finishing the manuscript writing. Here you can see the status of my manuscript writing and two journals that I selected for my uh, article. My second topic is comparing the accuracy of conventional versus different digital implant impression techniques, a systematic review and meta-analysis. I started this project in November 2022 and I plan to submit it in August. Uh, traditionally, the open tray impression technique is considered to be the gold standard in implant prosthodontics. This means splinting the impression copings and using some high quality impression materials such as polyether or type A silicon. This is a lengthy and uh, complicated procedure with serious discomfort for the patient and in some cases, for example, rehabilitation uh, prosto cases, it's not even uh, possible to, um, to undergo. Uh, digital impression taking offers a solution to these problems with a much uh, quicker and simpler workflow with less pain and less discomfort for the patient and hopefully less time spent in the dental chair. Uh, however, this is a quite novel technology and the accuracy of it is still under discussion. So my aim is to investigate whether the accuracy of this technology can match the gold standard open tray impression technique. Again, I use the PICO framework uh, with the pay, uh, population of patients in dental typodonts with implants with two intervention groups, digital impression taking with scan bodies and with coded healing abutments. My comparator group is conventional open tray impression taking and the outcomes are again 3D and linear deviations of the implant analogs. My hypothesis is that digital impression taking in implant and prosthodontics is at least as accurate as the conventional method. Uh, I conducted my systematic search on the 21st of January in three databases yielding a total of 2,081 articles and currently I'm at the phase of full text selection with 106 possible articles. Uh, my focus is currently on my first project, but if I have some spare time, I would like to finish the full text selection and start the data extraction table. Uh, and I would like to thank you for your kind attention and uh, finish my presentation with a quote from my favorite author, Anta Seb. As long as we keep moving, we don't notice how tired we are, but only when we sit down. Thank you for your attention. I would like, like to ask if you have had your, the opportunity in your career to try out both the digital and the conventional workflow, and if yes, which one do you prefer? Thank you for your question. Yes, uh, luckily I had the chance to try both of them, and um, it's clear that uh, for the patients uh, it's much more comfortable and, and much more uh, desirable to use the digital technology, and there is even a trend uh, to use this technology. Um, however, um, according to the literature and also in my own experience, there is still room for development and room for improvement in the digital world. Um, and in some cases, I would consider um, rather using the conventional method because it's a trusted and, and well-known uh, method. Even with its limitations and even with its mistakes, we are aware of those mistakes and we can work around them. Thank you. Thank you. In your slides, you have shown 
multiple implant placement. Uh, based on that, uh, have you tried multiple implant impression taking with the dig digital technology? Because uh, many of the technicians, so not all of the technicians are able to handle multiple implants via digital uh, impression taking method and uh, they used to prefer if you combine the old technology with the, with the new one. I mean, you have to connect and, and you have to be very precise even you use scan bodies. Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, in my personal uh, experience, I, I only dealt with the uh, um, solo crowns uh, in the digital technology. Um, and as far as I know, uh, these scanners uh, are also um, advised to be used for smaller uh, restorations uh, um, currently. Uh, however, uh, with connecting the scan bodies, the accuracy of the uh, scanning can be um, increased. And it, in these cases, if uh, the clinician or the patient would like to use um, as much digital technology as possible, then the indirect uh, digital way is the best option, I think. Scanners are very digital. They used to jump back to the previous scan body because they recognize as a known particle. So yes, and I, I think it's not so. <laughs> yes, and in the case of... It's not of a user-friendly method anyway, so you have to be... So you need that learning curve we yes. have seen before. And in the case of uh, full arch restorations, the edentalous parts of the jaws are very hard to scan. Uh, scan. Tricky, yeah. yeah.